So I got to ask you a question. So last week, you know, there was the whole Kalia being unstoppable and James was the only one who could guard her. So I want to get the real story from you. Like what went down? Did James really guard her or did she back off or what happened? I mean, James, James tried to prove a point by saying that he's the only person in the gym that can stay in front of Ka. And Steph was like, do it. And so he tucked his whistle in his shirt and, you know, he gets in his little stance. And I think to validate his point, Ka let him get the stop. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. So along those lines, uh, you know, I definitely want to ask you, how are you feeling? Because you left the wobble a little early last year. Definitely want to get your mental state as far as playing with Candice while the rest of the team is coming on and just kind of getting into your rhythm as you prepare for this season. Um, I'm good. All is well. All is well. Um, I've uh, been practicing pretty well. Um, I feel like I'm pretty much, you know, back to who you guys know and are and are familiar with. And um, as far as playing with Candice, you know, it's just been a joy. Um, it's been all that, you know, I expected as far as just being leader, being vocal. Um, she's very patient with us and, you know, just teaches us each and every chance she gets. So, you know, it's great to have somebody like that around. Appreciate you. Thanks, Tim. Holly Rowe. Hi, Holly. Hey there. How are you? Hey, Diamond. Just wanted uh -huh. you to kind of, how are you? I like that smile. I'd love for you to kind of walk us through your off season and how you approached training versus playing and, and getting ready for this season. Ooh, the off season, it really wasn't a day that I wasn't doing something. Um, Honestly, it was, it was a lot of a lot of work. I worked really, really hard this off season um, just to get to this point to be able to, you know, step on the floor confidently um, during training camp and, and compete. So you know, I was I was cross training a little bit with boxing, um, but I was always in the gym. You know, no matter what city I was in, I was always in the gym, and so you know, I was able to spend time with a lot of. Great trainers, Alex Bazell, Tyler Ralph, um, Jeff Pagliopia here in Chicago, and Tay Grace. I mean, I just, I had a lot of people help me. So, you know, I, I'm very thankful to have had that support throughout this process because it was a really challenging offseason for me. Um, but I'm here. Thank you. Annie Crosswell. Hey, Diamond, thanks for your time. Um, two quick questions for you. Um, first, you know, as you enter this season after your exit from the bubble last year, what is your focus as far as taking care of yourself, both mentally and physically, to make sure you are, you know, the best version of, of yourself on and off the court? Uh, I, I said my focus is just being consistent, you know. Um, Consistency wins. So even on days when I don't feel like, you know, where I'm tired, you know, maybe I'm in pain, I'm sore, just being consistent in what I've been doing, trusting my work. I put so much work in now, it's like you got to trust it now. I start playing. Um, so that's really it. And then second question for you, James talked about how your game and Candace's complement each other. And, you know, through this first week and a half of training camp, I wonder what you feel like you two are going to be able to accomplish together, given the fact that, yeah, your game really suits each other so well. Yeah, I mean, it's always great when you have a, a post player that's a, a willing and able passer. Um, but Candace, you know, she's just a playmaker. Like, if she's not passing, she's doing something else with the ball that just is amazing. So. Um, I, I, I can't, I have no idea what we'll be able to accomplish. Obviously, there's only one thing that I want to accomplish, and that's for us to, to be holding that trophy at the end of the season. Um, so as long as we're doing that and everything else that falls in between, I'm okay with you. Awesome. Thank you. Cheryl Rice out to PVZ.
Hi, Damon. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing just peachy. You mentioned the trophy. Do you get the feeling with the moves that were made, especially with Candace and, and, and some of the other moves, that this team has all the parts to hold that trophy? Of course. I mean, honestly, I felt like we had the pieces before the moves. You know, like Candace is just making it that much more of a possibility. Um, so, yeah. You know, I feel really good about our team and what we have when we're going into the season. Well, obviously, we have to figure it out. But what we have, um, and, you know, I don't see why not. One of the aspects last season that you needed to work on collectively as a team is defense. How do you see the defense coming together in training camp so far? Oh, the defense looked good. I mean, they introduced a lot to us early. So there's definitely like an adjustment period that we all had to kind of allow ourselves to go through. Um, but the defense looks really good, very disruptive. Um, it, it really complements who, who we already have on our team as like the athletes that we have on our team. So, you know, I think defensively, you'll definitely see another, a different Chicago Sky team. Thanks, it's great to see you back. Thank you. Dan from the Tribune. Diamond, I was curious uh, when the first time in your basketball life when you became aware of who Candace Parker was and how old you were and what your thoughts were. Um, the first time I became aware of who Candace was, I was in fifth grade. Um, I want to say that was when she was a senior in high school. And my mom went to Tennessee. So a lot of her track teammates and stuff all keep in contact. And one of her uh, best friends who ran at UT, there was a newspaper clipping of Candace. She just got to, she just arrived to Knoxville and it was just this big picture of her, but it was just the back of her jersey. And she was like looking out into Thompson Bowling. And like, that was the first time that I, became familiar with who she was. Um, and at that point, you know, she became my favorite player and someone who I aspire to be like. Um, so, yeah. As a teammate now, what do you see about her passion for the sport and, and her passion for, for sort of paying her journey forward to, to teammates? Um, what do I see? It's, it's less of a, of a seeing thing, it's more of a feeling. You know, I think like I'm big on energy. So it's like you can feel the, the love and, and the passion that she has for the game. Um, her energy kind of, it kind of just finds its way to spread throughout the gym. You know what I mean? In, in a positive way. And I think that she's well aware of that, the capacity that she has to influence like the environment. Um, and so she does a really good job of just staying positive and being encouraging. Thank you. Dorothy Gentry. The New York Times. Hi, Diamond. Thanks for your time. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, do you have any personal goals um, as you return to the court uh, for yourself as far as, you know, physically and just making sure that you're good to go? Um, maybe something you want to accomplish coming off of your injuries, one. And then two, after the events of last year and the bubble and everything, um, injuries as well as what was going on, you know, social, you know, justice wise and all of that, has anything changed your perspective on basketball and its place in your life? Um, yeah, I said I definitely have personal goals. You know, I'm, I want to get back to being the best player on the floor when I step out there. Um, as far as like awards and accolades and all that, I, I'm really not set on any of it. I just want to win a championship. Um, and as far as my perspective shifting, um, of course, uh, you know, you, you get to be surrounded by so much 
um, violence and hatred, trauma. Um, you know, I just start to look at basketball as a tool um, to be able to make an impact towards those things. Um, so yeah, um, it's definitely helped me not take the game so seriously. You know, we were talking about it earlier, Candace, James, and I, you know, some people just freak out about like missing shots or making bad plays. And then you got, you know, some people that are trying to find their next meal, you know, and really struggling with real life situations. So it's like, this is just a game at the end of the day. It's a game that I enjoy and I work really hard to be at the level that I'm at. But, you know, I definitely can say that I've had a change of perspective just in the past couple of years. Thank you. Edwin Garcia. Hi, Diamond. How are you doing this Monday afternoon? I'm good, Edwin. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> so I have a question actually about the uh, Commissioner's Cup. Uh, with so many changes, you know, this season's closer to normal, but obviously we're still very much deep into COVID protocols and things of that nature. And we see the NBA trying out this play-in tournament and some people like it, some people don't. Uh, what do you think about the, the WNBA um, kind of experimenting with this Commissioner's Cup and this competition within the competition uh, during the regular season? Um, I don't really have too many thoughts on it. I'm all about playing basketball, you know, so more basketball is always fun. And of course there's money involved. So, you know, I'm not too upset about that either. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we'll see, you know, I think I'll have a better opinion on it after it's done and hopefully we're a part of it. So. Yeah, thank you. Jason Palmer. Hi, Diamond. Um, what is it going to take for this team to bring the first championship in this franchise's history back home to Chicago? And how would it make you feel being a part of that team to make history here in the city of Chicago? Because you know we love our sports teams here. Right. Um, um, it's going to take all of us doing some things that make us very uncomfortable. You know, I feel like it's gonna take everybody stepping outside of their comfort zones um, and buying into what James and the rest of the coaching staff have for us um, and believing that we can do it. You know, we, we have a great team. You know, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but, you know, you still gotta go out and do the work. And I talked about consistency earlier. And I think that that's going to be a big key in, in how we um, pursue and attain, you know, first championship for not only the Chicago sky, but for, for the city of Chicago. Um, we want that just as bad as the fans do, just as bad as the city does. So we're going to do everything we can to get that done. All right. I appreciate it. We're all happy because we're getting Justin Fields, but we're going to be pulling for you all too, okay? <laughs> appreciate that. 